Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, SAN, GCON. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Lagos State, Akiomi Ambode. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Akwaibom State, Udom Emmanuel. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Delta State, my own very particular loving state, Ato Okowa. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Bono State, Kasim Shatima. We have quite a lot of excellency. I'm going to read all. Please let me indulge myself. Your Excellency, Governor of Ondo State, Mr. Akerodolu. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Kogi State. Your Excellency, that's Yaya Bello, please. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Gombe State. That is my very good friend, Hassan Dankwambo. Your Excellency, the former Governor of Cross River State, Donald Duck. Honorable Ministers here present, the Governor of Central Bank, Royal Fathers here present, Ambassadors of Foreign Missions here present, military um, attaches here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome. I feel very honored to uh, be here with you all today for the presentation of my little book. It's a little book because I've been encouraged by a number of my friends to write a follow-up. Um, not necessarily a second book, but a second story. This is actually a story. And you know, you don't finish telling stories as long as you are alive, you can need to tell more and more stories. Africa rise and shine. Many people have always wondered, particularly the media that had spoken to me and interviewed me, and uh, the local media, international media, channels TV, uh, Arise TV, me, other media houses had often asked me, how did I come about that title, Africa rise and shine? And it was very easy for me. Africa rising and Africa shining. The narrative of Africa had been something that had been so pathetic. As one of the speakers this speak with regard to Africa being a dark continent, really, that was the chairman of the occasion um, who narrated that during his time or his days, Africa had often been described as a dark, dark continent. And on my own part, when you Google Africa, the first description or maybe the first 10 results you get in Google is a continent of conflicts, a continent of corruption, a continent of coups, the three C's. Coups, corruption and conflict. And that was played out very dramatically about in 2004, there about 2001 actually, when the um, Economist magazine had on their front cover page, after coup had occurred in one or two African countries in 1984, it was December. And the next edition of uh, the magazine, uh, Economic, which all know so well, was that um, Africa, in fact, the heading was Africa, continent of coups, continent of corruption, continent of conflicts, hunger, and so on and so forth. But after several years, two decades thereabout, that narrative started to change even though in some cases, even when you Google, it will show you so many negative stories about Africa. And I thought we have to change that narrative. 
And today, we now know that Africa is truly rising. Some had asked me, what do I mean Africa is rising? How has it risen? Risen from where? Risen from being a dark continent, no longer a dark continent? I said, yes, and I could easily prove it. Between then and now, what you now have is per capita income, GDP per capita, of many African countries is well above 1,000 US dollars. Whereas about 20 years ago, per capita GDP income was below $500 for more than 50% of African countries. So for me, Africa is rising. And 20, 50, 30 years ago, only few African countries had mobile phones. But today, all African countries, without exception, now not only they have mobile phones, they also have broadband technology. Internet, internet penetration is high. Internet penetration is probably about 20, 30 percent for many African countries. But Africa is rising. If Africa is embracing technology, new economy, information age, the same way as US, the same way as UK, and so many other European countries. There's no better definition that Africa truly is rising. Now, more importantly, two years ago, in 2016, more than 50% of African nations, to be precise, about 25, 26 African countries, held democratically elected governments. More than 50% held democratically elected government. And today, the record shows that there's no single African country that is being ruled by any military. They are no longer ruled by soldiers. None. I thought, yes, yes, we need to clap for Africa in that regard. It's true. It's true, sorry, you can check it out. So how else can you describe a situation of hopelessness, coups, corruptions, and conflicts 20, 30 years ago, till today you have proper democratically elected government. It's Africa rising. So these are great indicators to show that Africa truly is rising. And if you also look at the fact that 20, 30 years ago, maybe only one or two African countries were listed in London Stock Exchange. But now you have African countries listed in London Stock Exchange. So truly, Africa is rising. Africa is rising. So it's in that regard that I had personally thought we should be able to rebrand Africa. Africa rising, that's how we came up with the name. The narrative has been changing and it will continue to change. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to continue to uh, offer some opportunities that we all never had the advantage of enjoying. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, apologies. I've been reminded that the governor of Taraba State, my very good friend, uh, Isiaku, is here. Your Excellency, with great apology, I feel so honored to have you in our midst. Any other name that I may have missed, we'll be very glad to recognize them. And um, in fact, I shouldn't be the one announcing this. The MC should do his job. I've been reminded that uh, the service chiefs uh, in the office of IG or police, we need all the protection we can get. They're also here. So we recognize you. We recognize you very much. So that is the narrative of Africa regarding the title, how we try to change the narrative. Africa, rise and shine. And another aspect of the book that I liked so much was even mentioned to me by my, by my children after they read the book. One of them said, Dad, I didn't know certain things about you until I read the book. Now, true story, how could that really be? I'm in the house with you every day. Of course, no, not every day. They are in school, I'm at work. But really, um, how 
what is Millennium Bug? And they had Google to find out fascinating stories about Millennium Bug. The Millennium Bug was, my colleagues are here, 1999, crossing into year 2000, where it was thought that computers will no longer function because of the coding defect occurred then, that occurred when they were being programmed. That probably airplanes would drop out of the sky, refrigerators may not do work, and so on and so forth. That was the year of Millennium Bug. We were so frightened that we had to do a lot of work to ensure that our computers, our servers worked. And the story was very frightening at that time. Now, my children thought, how could it be? You mean, truly, there was a time where we or the world did not really believe that the computers would work again. Yes, truly. In our lifetime, it happened. Now, one of my sons, age 19, which is, uh, we are now in 2018. Millennium Bug got called 18 years ago, so he was one year old. So obviously, I couldn't be discussing Millennium Bug with a one year old child. So he wouldn't know. And when we passed the test of the Millennium Bug, Y2K, it was no longer a news item, so it never featured anywhere in the media. And even when they got into secondary school, nobody tells them anything about Millennium Bug. So I'm glad that that particular story appeared in one of the chapters. And he was very shocked that this was a true story, that it truly happened. The fact that he went searching for it. And his friends did the same thing. So that shows the importance of documenting very interesting stories. If we didn't document that, maybe my son, my daughters, wouldn't have known there was anything like Millennium Bug. And their friends probably wouldn't have. That was also another very interesting chapter that I liked so greatly.